we can get started. Oh, great. Okay. Hello. Hello, and welcome to the Jerome Foundation's Jerome Hill Artist Fellowship Work Sample Workshop Webinar. Today, we will be focusing on guidelines and best practices for work sample submissions, both specific to the fellowship and we hope more widely applicable for other opportunities. Um, thank you all so much for joining us today. And you'll notice that your line is muted. So to ask questions, click the chat button in your menu bar. We'll do a Q&A at the end of today's session, but we encourage you to drop questions in the chat as they come up for you. And we request that you prioritize asking questions that will apply more broadly to all attendees. If you have questions that are very specific to your application or work sample, we encourage you to set up a phone call with program staff to talk through that individually. And we'll share details on how to do that at the end of this session. You can click the live transcript option to have closed captioning. This is done by a computer, so there might be some train, strange translations, but a corrected closed caption will be there for the recording of this session. And that will be posted to our events page in the coming days. And we currently have the fellowship overview, the application overview, and the CV workshop webinars available to view on that events page. And I'll also drop that in the chat. Great. Thanks, Andrea. Um, we are joining you today from, some of us are joining you from Minnesota Makoche, also called Minnesota. Uh, this is the homeland of the Dakota people. Today, there are 11 tribes, including four Dakota and seven Anishinaabe. And the Jerome Foundation honors and respects the tribal sovereignty, rights, and cultural resilience of the many native and indigenous peoples connected to this land, as well as the lands of the Lenape, Munsee, Canarsie, and many other tribes in what is also called New York City. I'm Eleanor Savage. I'm the program director at Jerome Foundation. I'm pronoun flexible. Uh, for a visual description, I'm in a I'm I am white skinned, uh, Scots Irish descent, wearing my green shirt and my prominent Irish ears and my black glasses. I have short cropped hair uh, and I'm in a yellow room with a very busy bookshelf and some plants behind me. And I will pass to Andrea. Hi, I'm Andrea Brown. I'm the Grants and Program Administrator at the Jerome Foundation, she, her pronouns. Uh, for a visual description, I'm white skinned, short, dark hair, black glasses, and I'm in a kind of grayish room with some late light filtering in and a wall of bookshelves behind me and I'll pass along to Melissa. Thanks, Andrea. I'm Melissa Levin and I'm a program associate with the Jerome Foundation based in New York City, though coming to you today from a little further upstate New York. Um, I, for a visual description, I am a white-skinned woman of Jewish uh, Eastern European descent. I have medium length, uh, wavy, although not so wavy today, uh, dark brown hair with a lot of gray peeking through. Um, I have bangs that cut right across my forehead. Um, I'm wearing a cozy white sweater and have some pink lipstick on uh, today. I am sitting in a kitchen turned into a temporary office space with blue cabinets um, and some wood shelves behind me, including two paper towel rolls that are uh, sitting there looking like big eyes looking over my shoulder. And I will pass to Lara. Hi, everybody. Welcome. My name is Lara Mimosa Montez. I'm uh, one of the program associates for the Jerome Foundation. Pronouns are she, her. For a visual description, I am a light skinned Puerto Rican woman sitting in an office space with a uh, white walls. I'm wearing a silk black tunic and behind me are some text-based artworks. Great, and the rest of our staff includes our president, Ben Cameron, and our finance team, Lori Lewan and Coretta Kendricks. So we have an hour together today and a good amount of content to cover. Plus we wanna leave time for your questions. 
The goal of today's session, as I said, is to both provide general and specific information about work samples. It is our hope that the guidelines and best practices we shared today are helpful to you in putting together your Jerome application and also can be applied to other similar application processes and opportunities. That being said, we definitely want to note that every organization will have unique requirements. And first and foremost, it is important to read thoroughly and respond accordingly to whatever the priorities are for a specific opportunity. We also wanna clarify that we are not going to review detailed requirements for submitting in each possible artistic field for the Jerome Fellowship, but we will refer you to where you can find more information and or we encourage you to reach out to us directly with any questions we do not answer today or elsewhere in our materials. So as you can see on the slide, today we will review the what, why, who, and how of work samples. And we will do a deeper dive into the Jerome review criteria and required work samples, as well as work sample formats, guidelines, and best practices. And again, lastly, as Andrea mentioned, we will do a Q&A. And I'm going to pass it over to Lara to talk a little bit more about the fellowship. Great. So before we get into work samples, we wanted to briefly review some of the basics of the Jerome Hill Fellowship. Um, we won't be doing an in-depth overview of the fellowship or the application in this particular session. So we also wanna direct you to recordings of previous info sessions um, for more information on these broader topics. Again, you can find these recordings on our events page and Andrea will drop the link into the chat. So the Jerome Hill Artist Fellowship generally supports a diverse range of early career generative artists based in Minnesota or the five boroughs of New York City. Once awarded, fellows decide for themselves how to allocate the funds, which may be used for the creation and presentation of new work, artistic development, and or professional artistic career development. Um, we like to be additionally clear that this is not a project specific grant, um, like Creative Capital or the MAP Fund. Some of you may be familiar with those um, other opportunities. The Jerome Fellowship support artists in uh, taking creative risks, exploring new ideas, and investigating professional and artistic activities. There's extensive information about the fellowship in our fellowship overview, and I'll ask Andrea again to drop a link to the PDF in the chat. Thanks, Andrea. Okay, so um, especially pertinent to today's workshop, your fellowship application fields will correspond directly to your work sample submission options. Um, I'm gonna speak a bit more here um, about how to select or choose your field. We strongly recommend considering which panel is best positioned to understand your artistic practice when selecting a field. Keep in mind that we emphatically um, embrace creative risk-taking as well as innovative, hybrid, and interdisciplinary practice. We also work hard to make sure that the panels are prepared to understand both work that fits solidly within a specific field as well as work that is pushing the boundaries. You'll find explanations of each field in the application guide, which Andrea will drop into the chat. Thanks again, Andrea. If you have questions about selecting your field, please contact your own program staff directly. Okay, cool. So going to now dive into um, some of the application components here, and you'll see that work samples are a central component of the Jerome Hill Artist Fellowship, um, as well as for most um, other similar applications in the arts, there's typically a work sample component. Um, but it's typically just one of several application components. So you'll see for Jerome, there are five primary parts of the application, which you'll see listed here. In addition to reviewing each component, um, note that review panels will additionally look for alignment among all of your application components. A note here that we don't require a budget, a specific plan, references, or recommendation letters for this fellowship. And those of you who have previously applied 
um, you'll want to notice that this application is different from the last cycle in several ways. So we want to encourage you to revisit those um, uh, overview documents, you know, so you don't assume it's the same as last time. These changes are responsive and based largely on feedback from artists and panelists, as well as accounting for the impacts of the intersecting crises we've all endured over the past two years. And I will hand it back to Melissa to speak a bit more about work samples. Thanks, Laura. So we will uh, go into what are work samples and why are they required in the applications. Um, in grant, fellowship, residency, academic, and other applications, work samples are your opportunity to represent your generative artistic practice and your body of work. Your work samples should always represent the strongest examples of your practice. They should also demonstrate how you implement your creative ideas and explorations. And they should give a sense of the work you have created and hope to create in the future. This all being said, work samples are a selection or an edit and not a comprehensive archive of everything you have ever created. And for different opportunities, you may also consider tailoring your work sample selection to align most strongly with specific guidelines or program goals. Next, work samples are typically accompanied by descriptive and contextual text, and that gives staff and panelists additional information about your work and practice. You should always provide any requested detail and offer as much context as possible for your work. In many cases, as with Jerome, your work sample is a or the central component of your application and likely also relates directly to a review, a review criterion of artistic merit or something similar. And we'll also talk a little bit more about that later. Work samples can be submitted in several formats, um, typically corresponding to your artistic field and options may include video, audio, text, images and or combinations of these formats. And finally, guidelines, requirements and preferences for different opportunities will be tailored to both the submission platforms as well as the goals of a given program. And as we've just noted, um, these can also change in a single program from year to year. Requirements or preferences may also include things like submitting full length works versus excerpted works or completed works versus works in progress, as well as time limits, page limits, guidelines around platforms such as YouTube, Vimeo and SoundCloud, or requirements for image types or image sizes and on and on. Again, we recommend reading thoroughly and following all guidelines and also inquiring directly if you have any questions that aren't answered on an organization's website or in their accompanying materials. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about who is reviewing your work samples, and this really depends on the type of application process. So, um, so depending on the type of application process, your work samples will be reviewed by a combination of program staff and or panelists uh, who will have been invited into a selection process by the grant maker. In many cases, there will be an initial staff review to confirm eligibility and functionality. If an outside panel is being convened, then applications will be forwarded on for panel review. And in general, as you can see here, panelists may include volunteers, community members, professionals in the field, both at the local and national levels, and or artists, peers, and former awardees. And this really depends on the opportunity in the program. At Jerome, review panels are field specific for all eight application fields and are comprised of arts professionals and artists, including past grantees, um, with the experience and understanding specifically of Minnesota and New York City early career artists. Uh, at Jerome, panelists' wide-ranging knowledge encompasses a depth and breadth of aesthetics, methodologies, practices, and ways of working and presenting work in various genres, forms, and styles. And you can view past Jerome Foundation panelists on our website if you want to learn more. And Andrea will also drop that link into the chat. 
Thanks, Andrea. And one more note on how work samples are experienced. Um, work samples now are most often experienced online or electronically on the personal laptop or desktop computers of program staff and panelists. Panelists are often viewing dozens, if not hundreds of work samples on their own time during a designated period ahead of convening as a group. Uh, most panels are now convened over Zoom, and this is both due to trends around environmental and economic consciousness preceding COVID and certainly catalyzed over the past two pandemic years. Uh, if an in-person panel is being convened, it's possible that more specialized equipment may also be used, such as projectors and sound systems, though also not a guarantee. And also a note that work samples will typically be reviewed according to the same guidelines and criteria provided in application materials. And I will hand uh, this back over to Eleanor to talk much more about review criteria. Thank you, Melissa. So review criteria are the set of priorities and values that both program staff and panelists use to evaluate applications. And it's important to consider these criteria to inform how you shape your application, including your work samples. Um, the review criteria will be specific to every grant opportunity, and we strongly recommend that you consider what the review criteria are when you're compiling your work samples. Uh, at Jerome, we are intentionally transparent about these review criteria. We want, we share with applicants the same information that we share with panelists. So we're all on the same page. And for Jerome Hill Artist Fellowship Program, the review criteria are artistic merit uh, of your work. Uh, this is the highest priority criterion for the fellowship. And we state that work samples are critical for assessing merit. And we'll provide a, a definition for merit, which I'll talk about more momentarily. The other review criteria are the, your creative explorations and aspirations. Of, of you and your work and engagement and or impact of your work on your field or creative communities. The panels will assess all of these criteria based on not only your work samples, but also responses to the core questions and the history and evidence of support and recognition on your CV. And as we mentioned earlier, the panel will also consider the alignment among your application elements. For example, whether the work samples and the CV reflect the information shared in those core question responses and or vice versa. And in reaching the final roster of fellows and alternates, the panels are charged to think not only of the ability of every finalist to meet each of the criterion strongly, uh, but of recommending a cohort of fellows that collectively captures the energy and diversity of the arts fields. So I'm gonna talk more in depth about work samples and artistic merit. We, we share the definition of merit because this is uh, an idea, a term that has many different meanings uh, to, to many different people. And we wanna provide both the applicants and panelists with a shared definition. So the way we define merit is the creative work that is or has the potential to be compelling, offering a distinctive vision and authentic voice, uh, deeply considered and imaginative, uh, executed with attention to craft and technical proficiency in the form, uh, aesthetics and genres, effective and engaging in the use of structure and aesthetics, providing artistic experiences that communicate unique perspectives, invite viewers to question, discover, and explore new ideas in new ways, taking creative risks by expanding or questioning, experimenting with or reimagining conventional artistic forms, and artistic merit is not defined by formal training. And in considering merit, the panel will also consider whether your samples and other application materials communicate a clear understanding of who you are as an artist, what you're doing and what you hope to do in the future. And so 
really pay attention to this list of how we're defining, because there's a lot of clues in there about, you know, what this fellowship is looking for. And we'll say more uh, about that further on, but I will hand it to Laura now, who's going to talk about the requirements around work samples. Great. So um, to meet Jerome's requirements, an artist must have work samples that represent two different completed works or sets of works that you generated. At least one of the two required samples or set of samples must be a completed work or body of work not created and presented while enrolled in a degree granting program or with all student performers, if applicable. We'll note that while it's not required for both samples, panelists overwhelmingly prefer work samples representing recent publicly presented non-student work. All applicants also have the option to submit a third work in progress work sample. This must be a work in progress that you intend to continue to develop after the application deadline or during the fellowship period. If work samples do not meet these requirements, then your application will not be considered further. In addition, um, staff and panelists don't do outside research to view additional work beyond the samples included in these um, applications. And I'll hand it back to Eleanor to um, talk a bit more about work samples and formats by field. Yeah, so for Jerome, applicants are asked to submit the required two work samples and the third optional work in progress samples in the forms of text, video, audio, images, or some combination of these formats, depending on your selected field. And this chart on screen here uh, has the work sample format options by field. Details and requirements for each field and type of submission can be found in both the application guide, guideline PDF, which Andrea has shared the link for, uh, and in submittable, so directly in the application. Jerome's option for work samples are nuanced because we are attempting to offer options that reflect the range of ways artists are working. And we are aware that this creates detailed information that you have to comb through and, and make sure that you are uh, following along the guidelines. But especially for artists who are combining types of samples, uh, we prefer to be responsive and embrace nuance rather than having a cookie cutter approach where everyone's trying to fit themselves into. Uh, so please know that we are here, <laughs> all of us on screen here, um, are here to help you with anything that is confusing. So I'm going to talk ab uh, about a few more best practices um, that apply directly to Jerome's application. So we ask you to submit generative work, not interpretive work. For Jerome, the applicant must be the generative artist for all submitted samples and have the rights to the work. If you're applying as an individual, you should not submit anything that you co-created uh, with others. If you're applying as collaborators, all of the work samples must be the creative generative work of all of the co-applicants. We, we ask you to submit completed, and by that we mean finished works. As Laura just reviewed in more detail, your two required samples must be completed works. And if you choose to submit one, your third optional sample must be a work in progress. Time and text-based work samples should be full-length videos, audio files, uh, compositions, or manuscripts, if applicable, with cue points or page sequences. So for text, video, and audio, we ask that you provide links to the full length work with specified start and end cue points. And this ensures that the panelists will see the portion that you feel best represents you and your work. While panelists are only required to view selected excerpts, they're also given the option of continuing to, be, to view beyond that minimum in order to better understand your work or to answer questions. Uh, for example, some, some panelists have talked about wanting to see how the, the work develops over time or 
they might want to understand like how you entered into this section that you've queued. You can only provide one queue sequence per work, not multiple short sections within a sample. And if no queue point or page range is provided, the panels will start at the beginning and experience the work for five minutes of video or audio or 10 pages of, uh, per sample. Cue points do not need to be equal for each work. For example, you might include six minutes for your first work sample and four minutes for your second work sample or 13 pages for one work sample and seven pages for another. For all samples, including images, upload them in the order that you wish them to be viewed, keeping in mind that you want to start with your strongest, most compelling work. And this might be chronological, reverse chronological, or grouped by a body of work, et cetera. Panels overwhelmingly prefer each required sample to be drawn from work created outside of your participation in a degree program, if applicable, and recent publicly presented work, if possible. And we know uh, due to the last two years that publicly presented work uh, has the, the possibility that has changed. And uh, we want to you know, make space for that. While applicants are strongly encouraged to adhere, adhere to the panel references, it is even more important that you submit samples, which you feel are your strongest examples of your practice that demonstrate how you implement your creative ideas and explorations and give a sense of the kind of work that you hope to create in the future. If you have chosen older or student created or non-publicly presented work, we encourage you to use the work sample context field uh, to explain why. And we'll talk more about that work sample context in a moment. Over to you, Melissa. Thanks, Eleanor. Um, so, I am going to share some additional insights and best practices that, um, while Eleanor just shared a lot of specifics about the Jerome Hill Artist Fellowship application, um, hope, we're hoping that these uh, best practices will also be more widely applicable to work sample submissions in general. Um, so starting with always submit the best and most compelling examples of your work and also choose compelling sequences. Again, keeping in mind that panelists are looking at dozens, if not hundreds of samples in their review, you really wanna capture their attention right away. For cue points and page sequences, we recommend starting at an engaging point. Uh, we recommend that you don't bury the lead. For example, avoid things like uh, credit sequences um, and kind of lead in material. Also select work samples and excerpts that resonate most with the opportunity that you are applying for. Next is around documentation. Um, we definitely recommend providing the best documentation you have available and documentation will always be an important part of your work sample submission, in particular, if the work sample format is not the original presentation format, um, which applies to uh, so many fields, live performance, sculpture, painting, social practice, and beyond. In these cases, your documentation is the vehicle to convey your intent and your vision to the panelists. We also know that documentation can be time consuming and expensive. So we just encourage you to prioritize it as part of your practice if and whenever possible for you. That being said, panelists are likely to be accustomed to variations in documentation quality, and you can use descriptive fields if they are offered to provide additional explanation and context. And again, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Next is to edit and share. Again, work samples are a selection and not a comprehensive view of everything you've ever created. We recommend trying to show and balance the breadth and depth in your practice, and also to align work sample selections with the text responses in your application if both are provided. Think about telling a story or the story of your work and practice. 
And if you can, show your work samples to at least one other person for feedback to help determine if your selections are effectively conveying your message and vision. And lastly, context is key. If space is provided, as it often is, offer explanations for elements that may not be clearly perceptible in your work samples, such as where and in what contexts and communities your work is being created and presented. Connect the dots for the panel. This is definitely, I should say, applications, work samples are definitely not a place uh, for mystery and intrigue, question marks and confusion. Um, it's best to really clearly describe to the panel what you want them to know about your work. Also, um, this is an opportunity to express awareness of how your work sample might illustrate uh, areas of your practice that might need more time and attention and talk about your strategies for achieving those goals. Um, and just wanna encourage you to take full advantage of all opportunities in any application to make your strongest case to the panelists. And I'll hand it over to Lara to talk a little bit more about these descriptive and contextual fields. Thanks. So again, this um, portion is going to be just a, more specific to Jerome and the fellowship application. So note that, as mentioned, we asked for both work sample descriptions and then work sample context. So first to discuss um, the work sample description field. In this section, you'll provide details about the work you're sharing, including the title of the work, the year completed or the year it was publicly presented, the location, the name of the presenting, publishing, exhibiting, screening, organization, or venue, or if it was self-produced. Um, you'll also include in the work sample description the length or scale of the work in terms of minutes, pages, or dimensions. This would also be the place to include the materials or medium and indicate whether it may have been shown in a solo or group exhibition, or if it's a short or evening or feature length work. We also want you to identify your role in the work sample. So you should note your generative role as well as any additional roles you played. Um, we understand that for some fields and practices, you know, there'll be greater ambiguity than others. So for instance, a choreographer and performer, or indicating you're a director and designer, or an author and editor, or perhaps a playwright and actor. This information should also correspond with what you have in your CV. So separate from the description field, there's the context field insubmittable. Um, we want to acknowledge since there's no substitute for experiencing something live or how an artist might intend in real time, we also ask for specific information about your work samples to help panelists understand your work. Um, this is a really important part of your work sample submission. So, you know, we really strongly encourage you to include information here um, when it makes the most sense. Some items you might include here to give panelists context as they experience your work um, might be a brief description of the entire piece. Um, any information about sections of the work occurring either before or after the time-based clip or text sequence. Um, perhaps it's exhibition format information that you'll include here, as well as your intentions and goals in creating the piece. You might also share that your work was challenging or um, is challenging to experience in short excerpts and why. You might also use this opportunity to draw panelists' attention to specific elements of your work. You can also point out anything or prioritize um, a note about your work sample itself. Generally speaking, panelists tend to appreciate this kind of candor. So for example, a filmmaker might say, this sample best demonstrates my close work with actors, but the sound mixing isn't where I would like it to be. I would like to draw your attention to the direction and acting in this excerpt, and also let you know that I would like to take the following steps to improve my sound. This is setting up the panelists to view the sample from the lens of your design. This is also where you can share 
if the panelists are viewing the work itself, such as a film or interactive website or documentation of the work, such as a video recording of a live dance or theater performance. You can share in this context field how the work sample format might differ from the live or in-person experience of the work. For example, if a project is social practice and involves live engagement, or if a work is multi-channel and requires special sound equipment, or if a work is durational and is intended to be experienced over several hours or days. You might also indicate if the scale of an object is not apparent from the image you've included, or if there are special instructions for reading order in a literary sample. All that said, the main point to get across here is that you wanna be as descriptive and, and as upfront as you can so that the panelists are given context and know where and how they might use their imagination to fill in any gaps. We've additionally noted panelists' preferences for work created outside of your participation in a degree granting program, again, if that's applicable to you, and recent publicly presented work if possible. Um, if you do submit work that falls into any of these categories, this is the place, um, the context field in which you're gonna wanna provide some further explanation. Okay, now moving on to ineligible work samples. So the following types here are work samples are ineligible, which would include promotional videos, trailers, reels, or interviews. Um, note that podcasts and TED Talks generally don't work here um, for this fellowship application. An additional ineligible samples include work in which you are a performer, interpreter, or translator, but you did not generate the work commercial or non-commercial work for hire that you generated at the discretion of a client, um, organization or producer, even if it's been commissioned, um, for which you do not have the primary creative control, or in other words, the right to use it. And then news or journalistic work is also ineligible. So that can be in print, video, audio, or podcast format. And I think um, that concludes the main information portion. Yeah, so I'd encourage you at this point to um, drop any questions you might have in the chat by clicking that chat button and, and typing in there. Um, and just a reminder that, that we do request that you prioritize asking questions that might apply more broadly to other attendees here. And if you have questions that are super specific to um, your practice, or your application, we'd encourage you to set up a phone call um, to talk with us through that in more detail. So maybe while we're um, waiting for some things to fill in the chat, one question that I've gotten from past applicants is like, why, why can I only pick like one section of a clip or one page sequence um, in a text sample? Like, why can't I give you two or three sort of slices of work? I can uh, respond to that. Um, the panelists have shared that they prefer to see and and get an experience of your work as if it were if it, as if they were experiencing it live or um, you know reading it uh, directly, and so. They want to see how the work develops um, and not have this kind of edited or, you know, kind of little bits and pieces uh, that that's very kind of uh, fractionalizing. It doesn't give a, a clear sense of the work uh, as it is experienced. And a question here, what if I have 15 minutes of one film I'd love to submit? And I would just rather do like nine minutes of that, just leaving like a tiny bit of amount for that second required sample. I just think that one of my samples is far superior to the other one. The panel really wants to see more than one work sample um, because they're trying to understand how your work develops from one, one piece to another. Uh, so you do have to submit, you are required to submit at least two work samples. 
what you can do is use the context fields, the description in the context fields to talk about the, you know, other sample that you, you feel is not superior. And you can talk about how the work is developed uh, from one to another. And that kind of awareness is really, and candor is very appreciated by panels. Would a literary sample published on a TEDx blog be an eligible thing as, as a published work sample? Laura, do you wanna take that? Sure. Um, I would say maybe not, um, but the best way maybe to feel this one, you know, like we don't review, the program staff doesn't review work samples and really offer feedback, but I think if you wanted to send one of the program staff a link um, in the sense of it, it depends on what kind of writing it is, right? So if it's poetry on a blog, I would consider that a published work sample. Um, but if it's something that's more journalistic in nature, um, then not that wouldn't be eligible. So it kind of depends, you know, what genre is that writing inhabiting? And also whether or not there is a kind of curatorial process or selection process related to uploading something to the blog. If the blog is kind of open uh, and, you know, doesn't have that curatorial piece, then that would not be acceptable. And again, that might be something useful to point out in the work sample context, just so there's like no questions, you know, if if you could include information about like this was selected to be part of this, or this was the process by which this got selected to be published, just so there aren't those, those questions um, that we have to answer for ourselves. Um, another one question is, uh, can you speak to how works in progress help in understanding the work? Yeah, I, Melissa, were you gonna take that one? Oh, I, I can try to start us off, but I'm, I'm sure you'll fill in some gaps. Um, but I think, you know, generally the answer is, um, is that we do have a specific third work sample option that is exclusively for works in progress work samples. And that is actually um, a section that we've added that is, um, is responsive both to artists and panelists um, because having samples of works in progress can be very helpful to understanding an artist's overall practice. And also because it's a two-year fellowship to understand um, what they might be making right now and into the future. And it is optional. So it isn't a requirement that, you know, that you know exactly what you'll be working on. Um, but having that work in progress sample certainly um, is, is great for and helpful to panelists. I'm gonna add anything, Eleanor. No, oh, that's great. Okay. okay. Um, so this, this might be specific to music. Um, but in terms of a work in progress work sample, um, if a like a composer has a work that that they've composed or, and it's been performed in some form, but it's not yet in its intended final form, like maybe it's been performed live, but it hasn't been like on an album recording, would that be considered a completed work and eligible, or would it be maybe considered as a work in progress? Um, or vice versa, if something's been kind of maybe recorded as a demo, but not yet executed and, and performed publicly. Um, can you speak to that line between what's completed and, and what's a work in progress? Mm -hmm. um, well, it, it, this is a tricky question, right? So it could go <laughs> in many different ways, but it sounds like um, if it, you know, if it hasn't been re been recorded, if it's not in its intended final form, I would think that solidly fits into the work in progress category. Um, if it's completed, uh, but it hasn't been um, record, you know, re distributed on a, a, C a CD or album or um, performed live, 
uh, that could count as completed work uh, and would be an eligible sample. Um, but I, you know, I think that that's where you can really use those context fields to talk about what state the work is in and, and just give more information to help understand. I think, you know, for Jerome, the work samples have to be, the, you have to have two completed work samples. And for, for this round of the program, they don't have to be publicly presented. Although in the past panels have preferred uh, publicly presented work versus completed and not, not shared. Anyone know, had anything else? I just wonder if you might be able to speak to that in, in reference to like literature where maybe, you know, the book has been <laughs> written, but not yet made it out into the publishing pipeline or film where it might be completed, but not yet distributed. Yeah, the, the same would apply there. If it, it's completed and hasn't been published or, uh, you know, released, um, you do have the option of, of using those as your work samples. Again, you want to use your strongest work. And this is one of the reasons that we uh, don't have the requirement of something as being publicly presented or published or distributed, uh, especially given the, the last few years where those kind of opportunities are, are rare and uh, access to those has changed radically. Um, we want you to be able to put forward what you feel is your strongest work. Let me add just also in terms of kind of taking um, taking work in progress in a in a pretty in a pretty literal way to say like if is it something that you are currently working on and that you plan to be working on you know into the future whether it's you know the two years of the fellowship or before or beyond um to say that you know there's also that would also define you know define a work as a work in progress um and that's i think something we also say in the guidelines is a work that you know something that you're working on now or after the application deadline mm -hmm. And then as a, a playwright, um, we should be clear that we don't support specifically screenwriting. Uh, would it be advisable to submit the text or recording of the live presentation? And we do allow this option. You can upload a script uh, as a playwright and then you can provide um, video documentation of the live presentation. And that gives panelists a lot of information. Uh, so they have, you know, your script, and then they they see how that has been, you know, directed and interpreted by uh, performers in a live experience. And just one thing to note is that you'll be asked to, you know, upload and identify the pages excerpt, and then when you provide the video, what you'll want to do is kind of provide the the time that aligns with the pages that you've asked panelists to focus on. Another question, if I have reels of different moments of the same work, is that acceptable? Or could you explain more details about um, real limitations in the case of video documentation of the work? Um, reels, when I, when I hear reels, that um, makes me think of like a promo trailer or um, like multiple short clips put together to kind of give a, a sense of the whole of the work. And that is not an eligible work sample. So you want to identify if it's, I don't know if you're working in film or performance or, or what the video content is, but you want an actual sequence. Uh, of the work itself. I think the question may be related to like either a new media practice or, or a social practice. How might that work? Uh, again, it's the same 
same situation. You, we don't want an edited uh, kind of montage of the experience. If it's social practice, you want to give a, a clip of the actual experience of the work or the event. Or if it's um, uh, uh, web-based uh, project, you'll want to give a, a clip. It, it's helpful, and you have this option to give both a, a link to if it's a live site where the panel could experience how to manipulate it live. Uh, you can provide that, uh, and also um, a video of someone actually engaging with the, the site. For visual artists, do you prefer installation shots, details, or just works one at a time? I can try to take this one. Um, so we definitely, for, um, for visual artists who are submitting images, definitely want to see the individual works. So the um, documentation of individual works is definitely an important part of the sample. I think if um, it can be really helpful to see work in context and it can be helpful to also see details. So um, I really think of installation and detail shots as being in support of um, when thinking about um, thinking about image work samples, but also it could be that, um, you know, and maybe I'll just go back and say it could really depend on what your practice is. So if you make room size installations, then you're going to think about your sample in a different way. And I don't know if you want to further specify, um, you know, for a room size installation, you might be providing those larger views and then details to support that. Um, whereas if you, let's say, make individual paintings, you might provide uh, images of the individual works and then an installation or exhibition view and, you know, a detail or two to really show the surface if, uh, if that's an important aspect of your work. And, you know, we'll always go back to saying, um, you know, you definitely want to provide the best and most compelling documentation that you have and also that which best represents the practice and the work. So. Um, yeah, just to reiterate, I think it really depends on the type of work that you're making, whether it's, you know, the scale will really dictate kind of the, um, the range of the images that you'll be providing. Um, for literature, since it can be text or video or, or audio, does that mean simply reading your text aloud? Is that preferred for a literature format or is the text itself as an upload preferred? You're required to up, upload the text format. You have the option if you are someone who, you know, writes for the page as well as the stage, um, you, you can uh, also provide a complimentary video or audio that corresponds to the uploaded text. And I want to clarify, Eleanor, that's for poetry in which that's an option only, that yep. kind of um, video or audio recording. Um, Correct. Rather than if you're applying in prose in literature, that option isn't available. A question for film. Um, can you submit one film sample and one screenwriting sample? No, you have to, you, you're required to submit two film samples. We, we don't support specifically screenwriting uh, as an eligible uh, uh, application. We're focused on, uh, you know, film directors who are, are creating their own original uh, film work. And that's it for the questions that are in the queue in case people want to get some in. We can also uh, give you some time to do that and go back to some of our slides here. Yeah, so maybe as um, you know, we leave you a couple of minutes to send in some closing questions. I'll add some information here that we've got a couple of Q&A sessions coming up closer to the deadline. 
for information on how to attend, um, again, you'll go to that same link that Andrea's provided, um, the jeromefoundation.org slash events. Um, this session for today will be captioned and posted to the events page in the coming days. Um, at that same link, you can also watch the other sessions that we have up there. So CV webinar, as well as the fellowship and applic application webinars. Um, note that the upcoming Q&A sessions will not be recorded or posted. And then I'll give it over to Eleanor to close with information about the deadline. Yeah, and uh, I, I don't know if there's more questions coming in, but one thing before I get to that, I would say I have had artists ask about the context fields and the description fields and wondering like, why do I have to explain my work to the panel? And the panelists that we work with, as you'll see, if you, you know, take a look at our past panelists are really actively engaged in the fields that we're supporting. They, you know, are, are people who have relationships with early career artists in these fields uh, and that are very, you know, have a real breadth of understanding about the kind of different experimental ways and uh, a, just a broad range of experience. So it's not, we don't see it so much as explaining, but more providing information. And uh, the more information that you can give to panelists who may not be familiar with your work, they may not uh, understand specifically, for example, why, why you see your work as creative risk-taking. And you have an opportunity through, through the, the fields that we provide you to just share more in depth about where you're coming from, what you're doing, and, you know, uh, give some clues into your experience as an artist. And now I will do the big deadline uh, uh, slide here. Uh, the, the fellowship applications are due Wednesday, May 4th, 2022. And that's at 4 p.m. Central, 5 p.m. Eastern. 4 p.m. Central, 5 p.m. Eastern. Not midnight. Um, I know there's a lot of applications that have midnight deadlines, but we do not. And there's a reason for why we do not. And that is because we want to be in, you know, available if you're having a problem. Uh, and because we don't accept late applications uh, or incomplete applications, we want to be available to support any issues around submission, you know, during the work hours and before the deadline. So you know, once an application is submitted, it can't be edited or updated. So please get your application in in advance of that 4 p.m. Central, 5 p.m. Eastern deadline. And if you're having technical issues, you can contact Submittable uh, using, there's a link at the bottom of the page in Submittable on your browser, or you can contact Andrea, who is our own uh, technical wizard here at Jerome Foundation. And finally, we want to let you know how you can reach us after today's session. Um, as we've mentioned a few times, if you have any questions about your eligibility or general questions about the program, we incur and or application, of course, we encourage you to make a phone call appointment with uh, this program staff. You can also send your questions by email if you prefer, and all of our email addresses are listed in the fellowship overview, which we've also put in the chat. Thank you all again so much for joining us this evening. Um, I'm just going to do one check with Andrea to see if we have any other questions. Yep. We've got one more. Oh, OK. Um, so we'll, we'll go to that. So if you have completed, as in publicly presented, a short form version of a work sample and would like to expand to make it long form, can the short form be considered a work in progress for that optional sample? Boy, we get the really good nuanced <laughs> question. Yeah. ones at the end. <laughs> um, yeah, that. Uh, 
I think that what the panel would want to know is more information on, you know, kind of what you're doing, how you're expanding it. If it's, if it's been publicly presented and is complete, uh, I'm not sure that they would see that as kind of that kind of work in progress, but we're willing to talk to you about that. And so I would encourage you just to reach out to any of us here and we can kind of explore that further with you. Can I add one more closing comment that it occurs yeah, to me? Yeah. Um, so, you know, just sympathetic with everyone in the application process. Um, you know, those who are maybe new to applying to opportunities um, and feel like, I don't know what I like, don't know what a most compelling work sample is or how I still have a hard time, like understanding how panels, you know, when they're looking at hundreds of samples, like how do you stand out? That's what my students always ask me <laughs> in regards <laughs> to job applications, but how do I stand out? Um, and, you know, there's no like secret answer, but I will say just from personal experience and I'm sure, you know, others on this call would agree, like volunteering for local review opportunities um, sometimes through, you know, like for example, the Minnesota, Minnesota State Arts Board, um, there are opportunities for community members and practicing artists um, to, you know, sit on review panels. You don't have to just be like an accomplished or established artist sometimes to um, panel. And I think those experiences can really help you get a sense of how people look at things, especially when there are um, different fields and different kinds of um, artists in you know different genres and practices. So I feel like that practice has personally been very helpful for me in terms of giving insight. And I always encourage those um, to seek out within your local artist communities if there are volunteer opportunities for which you you know might be like welcomed and it's sometimes it's just going to the website and clicking a form that says like, oh, I wanna submit my name and contact info to volunteer as a reader or as a judge or on a review panel or something. And then, you know, because they always need readers and they'll pay you a nominal fee, um, that experience can be like, can teach you a lot, I think as a practicing artist. So just want to throw that out there in case people still felt like they could use some um, additional help after this call and after this application process. Thank you all for joining us today. We really appreciate you making the time for this. Thank you for all of your questions. It also helps us think through the different types of nuances um, beyond what we've already considered with work samples. So yeah. grateful for that. Very grateful. Bye everyone, thank you.